Now we can move towards the replicative cycle quickly. So here again, you can see all the three things, three different enzymes. Now we will talk about their function. So here you can see a macrophage. This is our healthy cell, the normal cell with its nucleus and the genetic material DNA. So at first this HIV, this HIV will try to approach our healthy cell macrophage, right? and then it will come close to our macrophage and it will try to interact with our macrophage with the help of its glycoprotein 120. We know that these oval things are in fact the glycoprotein 120 and with the help of glycoprotein 120 it will interact with the receptors of macrophage. Now there are many receptors that are present on this macrophage but HIV virus tends to attack those cells that possess CD4 molecule. Now we know that there are many different kinds of WBCs that are present within our body like basophil, eosinophil, neutrophils, dendritic cells and so on. But HIV tends to attack those cells that possess a special molecule CD4 or a special receptor which is known as CD4 receptor. So the glycoprotein protein of this particular HIV will interact with the CD4 receptor that is present on this macrophage but this interaction is not enough for HIV to cause infection or invade our cells. It also requires another kind of interaction that is between the GP120 of HIV and CCR5. Now this particular receptor is known as chemokine receptor number 5. So this is in fact a co-receptor that is present on on our normal cell but this association is absolutely essential this interaction between the CCR5 and the GP120 this is absolutely essential for the HIV virus to proceed to the next step otherwise it won't be able to infect this particular cell so let's move towards the next phase we have the third step now after these two interactions the cell is finally able to fuse with our macrophage and more specifically this HIV virus will fuse its lipid bilayer with the plasma membrane of macrophage so as you can see that the cell membrane or the plasma membrane of macrophage is fused with the lipid bilayer of the virus body and after that this particular cell would be able to release all its content within the macrophage in this fashion and here you can see the two identical RNA strands they will undergo a special kind of transcription we know that the normal central dogma involves the process of transcription where RNA is synthesized from the DNA but here things are totally opposite from the RNA DNA is synthesized. So this kind of process is in fact known as reverse transcription. It is the opposite of normal transcription. So this takes place with the help of this particular enzyme which is reverse transcriptase enzyme. And we know that after the formation of DNA, DNA tends to exist in double helical form like this manner and after the formation of double helical structure of DNA now this is a viral DNA and now it will try to enter our nucleus and it will try to integrate with our DNA in this fashion and this particular step the fifth step is possible due to another enzyme which is integrase so integrase enzyme will bind or integrate the viral DNA into the DNA of macro and now at this particular moment we can say that viral DNA has hijacked our machinery the cellular machinery the ribosomes so it will use our cellular machinery to form all the required components that are absolutely essential for the formation of new HIV or the daughter HIV so the next step is quite simple this DNA will undergo transcription and it will give us two kinds of RNA. The genomic RNA which will become part of the progeny or the daughter HIV and it will also synthesize mRNA. And mRNA we know that it will work with the ribosome of macrophage and it will start producing proteins by the process of translation. So you can get the idea that mRNA will form all the required proteins that are essential for the formation of new HIV or the daughter HIV. 
HIV, right? So all the different components will be formed. But here is the problem. The mRNA is translated into proteins, but they are not individual proteins. They are synthesized in the form of long chains or in other words, we can call them polyproteins. So here we will get polyproteins out of the mRNA, right? So they are not the functional protein. They have to be cleaved. They have to be cut into smaller functional proteins. And this particular function is performed by proteases. Proteases cleave the polypeptides into smaller functional proteins. So this can be compared with a situation. We know that in a factory, when something is made, they are usually in this form. When they are packaged, they are usually joined to each other, right? And at the final stage of the production, these products are separated with the help of a cutter so that the company can sell them individually and products can be sold individually, right? So quite similarly in this particular replicative cycles, the polyproteins are cleaved by proteases which are in fact acting as the molecular scissors. These molecular scissors cut the long chain polyproteins into smaller functional proteins. Only then the proteins can perform their specific role or function. So after the formation of all the different components, there comes the stage of assembly. The components will be assembled and finally after the assembly, they will begin to exit this particular macrophage in this manner. And you can see that all the components are aligned now and they are assembled and the new HIV or the daughter HIV is now trying to escape the macrophage. And in this fashion, we will get a lot of daughter HIV. So a single cell entered, but now it is exiting in the form of multiple copies, right? And here you have to notice an important thing. This particular viral DNA, it is able to synthesize almost all the components that are required for the formation of new virus. But it is not able to produce the envelope, the lipid bilayer. So as this particular virus is trying to exit this macrophage, it will take a piece of our plasma membrane, right? Which will ultimately become part of this virus as the envelope. Right. So you can get the idea as more and more HIV are attacking our healthy cells. They are taking a part of cell membrane one by one. So if HIV entered our healthy cell and it formed multiple copies, all the copies will take a piece of our plasma membrane with them. Right. And in this way, our cell will lose integrity and there comes a stage when it will cease to exist. It will die. So that was the simple idea behind how this HIV steals our plasma membrane. So if this idea is still unclear, we can see an animation. Here you can see HIV entered our cell, it multiplied, and as all the copies are leaving, they are taking a portion of our cell membrane with them. And this cycle goes on and on and on. And due to the repetition of the replicative cycle, our cell will lose its integrity why? Because with each replication, it is losing portions of the cell membrane and ultimately the cell will cease to exist and die. So I hope this idea is clear. Now, before moving to the next topic, we can quickly recap the whole cycle. Here you can see HIV is trying to approach our macrophage, the healthy cell. And then in the second step, it is trying to interact with our macrophage with the help of two kind of receptors that are present on macrophage, CD4 receptor as well as CCR5 receptor. And then after this interaction, this particular phase is possible due to GP41. This is known as fusion and it is possible possible due to GP41 portion of the glycoprotein. So GP41 is involved in fusion while GP120 is involved in interaction, right? And then in the fourth step, there is a special kind of transcription. It is actually reverse transcription. We know that HIV belongs to retrovirus. Why? Because retro means backward in the reverse direction. So these viruses have the tendency to undergo reverse transcription. That's why they are known as retrovirus, right? And then after the formation of this DNA with the help of reverse transcription, this viral DNA will try to enter the nucleus and it will bind or integrate with our genetic material, the DNA, with the help of integrase. In the fifth step, it will try to integrate or bind to the 
macrophages DNA. Now this is known as the pro viral DNA and it will hijack our machinery, the cellular machinery to form all the required components for the progeny or the daughter HIV, right? And then all the different components are formed and then in the seventh step, all these components are assembled and they're ready to exit the macrophage. But as they are leaving, they are stealing a portion of our cell membrane, right? And ultimately and finally, we will get a lot of daughter HIV in this form. So that was the replicative cycle of HIV. Now we can quickly summarize the whole topic. We know that there are many other cells that also possess this unique CD4 molecule. So far we only talked about the macrophages which are the monocytic cells, but there are certain other cells that also possess the CD4 molecule. The list is given here. So this HIV has the ability to attack or invade these T cells as well. And more specifically, this particular T cell is helper T cell. And this T cell also possess special molecule which is CD4 receptor. So the GP120 of HIV will try to interact with CD4 of the T cell, but this interaction is not enough. It will also interact with another kind of receptor that is present on T cell. But in the case of T cell, that co-receptor is known as CXCR4, right? And after these two interactions, the same process is repeated. We already talked about the replicative cycle for macrophages. So same kind of steps would be followed here. And after all those steps, we can call this helper T cell, the infected helper T cell. And same kind of steps are followed here. And ultimately this T cell is also affected or infected by HIV. We know that macrophages are the monocytic cells, but when these monocytes enter our nervous system, the central nervous system, there they are known as microglia. So these microglia are also affected by HIV. And then we know that apart from T helper cell and macrophages, there is also a third category of WBC that possess the CD4 molecule and they are known as the dendritic cells. So they are found in the lymph nodes and there are also follicular dendritic cells that are present in spleen. And there are also special kind of dendritic cells that exist beneath our skin. We know that skin has five layers and the upper one is dead layer. But beneath all these layers, there are special class of dendritic cells. They are known as Langerhans. And Paul Langerhans discovered it. That's why they are known as the Langerhans cells. So they should not be confused with cells of pancreas. They are named so because they were also discovered by Paul Langerhans, the German scientist. So I hope this lecture was helpful. Thank you for listening.